it is phase two, day four, the final day of phase two. We're gonna get started with some box squats. Box squats are an excellent exercise for both beginner and intermediate, and as you can see here, they translate perfectly to dumbbells as well. What you're gonna to wanna to do is have a slightly narrower stance to allow room for the dumbbells, which are gonna be hanging on each side of you. You're gonna go ahead and get down into a box position. Try and get something that's about parallel, a little lower if possible. There could be many things around your house you can use for that. You can just use a chair if you'd like. You just wanna make sure it's sturdy. And just lightly touch the chair or bench or object you're using to perform the box squat. You're gonna push through your midfoot. You're gonna, of course, keep those knees aligned with the toes, chest up, back straight. Squeeze the glutes in the top position, and then you're ready to go for rep number two. We're gonna be doing four sets, eight reps. Yeah. Next exercise, we're gonna be hitting some back. It's gonna be the bent over alternating dumbbell rows. Now, a bent over position immediately, you're gonna to have to contract your core, lower back, your abdominals. It helps stabilize your spine in that bent over position, so you're really gonna to have to engage that quite a bit. And in the alternating motion, you're gonna be working one side and immediately alternating to the next. So it just makes it a little bit more difficult too. When you're kind of working one side, all of a sudden it's gonna throw you off and you're gonna to have to engage your core a little bit more to stabilize you. So in that bent over position, you don't have to get completely parallel to the floor. You can kind of arch up a little bit as long as you have that nice, flat, and straight back. And uh, you know, if you're grabbing the dumbbells here, be rolling up one, really try to get that elbow high as you can, bring it down to the bottom position, and then bring the next side up. So you're going to alternate back and forth, keeping that chest pointed right towards the floor, try not to twist with it, and get those elbows nice and high. And as you can see, Getting those dumbbells about the armpit area as you roll them up just about here. You go a little bit closer, kind of the hip action. So it's kind of depending on where you want to work. Kind of the wider you go, a little bit more of the upper back, more narrow you go, a little bit more of the lats. But you're gonna immediately feel it in that back. Ooh, which is what we want. One thing you try to avoid is using your legs to help that weight get to that top position. Really try to just keep them stiff, keep them contracted, but keep them in place. And it's gonna be all in the back with the flexion of the elbow, also the shoulder joint, nice squeeze the top, and then get a nice stretch in the down position. Alternating incline press. Another one very similar to the last one, except instead of working on the back, this time we're gonna be hitting the chest more specifically the clavicular portion, smaller part of the chest, a little bit harder to work. So it's always great to throw in some exercises like the incline press and such as the last one with it being alternating, you're focusing on one side to the next. There's gonna be a lot of core activation, which is gonna, this is gonna be good because it's stability. It's also working on the exercise. So you're, um, you're like watering a couple plants with one hose. Sometimes they call that killing two birds with one stone, but it's a little morbid. It's <laughs> like fucking three holes with one day. <laughs> yeah, like I was saying, you know, that core activation is mainly um, because once you're kind of pressing one side up, it's gonna feel like it wants to pull you to one side. What helps me is take a pretty wide stance on my feet. So that way I kind of have something to kind of balance a little bit more. And of course, activating your core is gonna really help for that stabilization as you're pressing one side up and then right on the next. So it's kind of engaging your core almost in a unilateral motion too, because it's gonna keep wanting to pull you one side. So you're gonna have to continue to like engage your core to control that motion. So this is definitely um, something different if you haven't done a unilateral press before. It is, uh, you have to kind of get used to it. So take a little bit, bit light whenever you're doing a new movement and kind of get that motion down. Make sure your structure's supported correctly and then you're gonna feel it big time in that upper chest. As you can see, if this was an episode of Sesame Street, unilateral would be the word of the day because that's what we're all about right now. As you can see, I'm doing the alternating shoulder press, one side, alternating over to the other. Unilateral, of course, meaning one, bilateral, using both. So again, a lot of core stabilization. You can keep that wide stance to prevent yourself from kind of, you know, weighing over from one side to the next. And uh, 
you got this. Feeling that pump. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. You notice real fast on an exercise like this if you haven't put on deodorant or not. You know. Thick. Moving on to the isolations, we're going to do bent over shoulder extensions. It's going to be three sets, 10 reps. I'm going to be focusing on the posterior part of the deltoids. And if you haven't given this exercise a shot, you really should because it looks pretty weird. I'll admit, when I first saw it, I'm like, what the hell? But when you do it, you immediately feel that activation in those posterior delts. And it's definitely a staple of our workouts that I really enjoy doing. Ooh. So shoulder extension is actually one of the main function of the posterior delt. Um, flexion of the shoulder being this way and extension being that way. And even if you take your arm back like this, as far as you can, you'll immediately feel uh, the posterior deltoid contract quite a bit. So that's basically what you want to do to practice movement is just bring your arm back as far as you can, kind of reach back here, feel that muscle engage. And that's when you know you're in the proper position. And of course, in the better position, core is activated a lot more, stabilizes is fine, but we're adding weight to it. So once you kind of bring that top, try to hold that position for as long as you can, maybe like a half second, second count before you lower down to the bottom position and try not to swing the weight up. So really try to control that movement, really squeeze, and then bring it back down to bottom position. Of course, you can get a pretty good groove. You know, once you're into it, and once you kind of feel that contraction in that posterior delt, then you can kind of like go from there. But definitely, it's kind of something to get used to because some people don't feel this right away. When you get in that position, you're kind of bringing your shoulders back. I don't feel my rear delt. Eh, this is bullshit, this doesn't even work. But that's when you have to really try to make sure you're getting in the proper position, actually having that activation. Really try to connect to that muscle, squeeze, bring it down. Again, like we said many times before, start with a lighter weight, work into that, make sure the muscle is contracting properly, and then slowly work up and weight from there. Underhand flies, three sets, 10 reps, isolating the chest. So when a lot of people think about flies, you either think about lying down with the dumbbells or when standing, you usually think of a cable machine. But thankfully, you can do it with dumbbells. You'll see here, I'm basically forming a pyramid with each repetition, really squeezing at the top position, bringing it back down. And of course, as Brandon mentioned earlier with this one, you really do want to focus on light weight in the beginning because it is a strenuous exercise. You're not going to be able to push as much as you want and you want to keep that strict form. So start light, get used to it and reap the benefits of this exercise because it's a good one. What really helps me kind of feel it the most is, you know, keeping those shoulders down and back. It brings the chest up. And so when you're in this position, you get better squeezing the chest. If your shoulders are rolled forward, what happens is when you're in this position, you be a little bit more engagement in the front delts. Now, of course, the front delts are going to be involved no matter what. But if you really pull that chest up, shoulders back, even arch the lower back slightly and really get into this position here, you can almost kind of like feel the squeeze in your chest, like you're squeezing your chest together at that top position. And it definitely helps with kind of feeling the exercise a little bit better and making sure you're getting the full activation in the chest. Last exercise of this workout is gonna be reverse crunches, three sets, 15 reps. They also go by the name back farters. And you're about to find out why. <laughs> Laughter keeps the core tight. <laughs> if you're trying to impress someone in the gym, yeah, don't perform this exercise. <sighs> They're getting quieter. No, <laughs> they're not. I think, is this what you sounded like when you're doing the like, vegan, all eating all those beans? Yeah. And then it also smelled like a nuclear waste dump too. So thankfully that doesn't happen with reverse crunches. <sighs> Excellent core exercise, little goofy as you can see. So uh, use it at your discretion. I would, I, would pref I would recommend doing this exercise on at your home, home. <laughs> at a, <laughs> which is why we're at home. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Wrap it up, Tyrion Lannister. This is, this is my uh, quarantine look. <laughs> that wraps it up. Phase two of our dumbbell only workout is finished. We'll see you for phase three, which is gonna be upper lower body splits. We're excited, hope you're well, stay safe, stay isolated, and <sighs> stay buff, yeah.